Hey there, I'm Terry, and I'm the intuitive healer for folks who have anxiety and want to access their soul evolution and intuition. There's more than meets the eye here as we chat and hang out in these episodes that have spiritual, esoteric, multidimensional, somatic, quantum techniques, tools, and tips to help you get unstuck and move you forward in your day-to-day life. So join me in discovering your path to help you clear anxiety of the past, align your energy to the present, and create your new future. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Portal with Terry Huberman. I'm so excited to bring to you uh, my guest today. I just totally messed up my notes here. Oh, okay. You know, Zoom, one of the, I guess you can call it beautiful things about Zoom is that it allows you to learn how to do things differently. (laughs) (laughs) I have my notes all settled here. And then all of a sudden I see the beautiful Diana, my guest, who I'm going to introduce you to everybody. And then my notes just bam, disappear. But I found them again. This happens, Harry. This happens. Right? I mean, and the thing is, is like, we just got to roll with it, right? Because we already already have enough (laughs) problems to deal with. Though it's just not worth all the stress. So, but that's what we do here in the portal. We learn how to manage and navigate the stress and anxiety, right? Well, today- Today, I am so excited to bring you guys Dr. Diana Kirshner. Okay, so let me just tell you a little bit about her, and then I I know you guys can see her, but then we'll talk to her so you guys can hear her as well. Um, Dr. Diana is a PBS love expert. She's a psychologist. She's appeared on Oprah. There's a show on Amazon Prime called Love in 90 Days, which is actually based off of her bestseller book, Love in 90 Days. And she has helped tens of thousands of people all over the world create a high value, self-confidence, successful, lasting soulmate relationship. So not just any old kind of relationships, relationships that are very meaningful and connective. So I am so excited to bring Dr. Diana to you. And here she is. You guys can see her. Now you can hear her. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm particularly excited about your audience. Yes. Uh, because yes. they're alive. They're fully alive, you sure. know, and um, really get things on so many different levels, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you think it for somebody who's very sensitive, right. And very empathic. Um, what do you find working with your clients and you, you have a coach, you have a team of coaches. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think has worked best in terms of mm-hmm. relationship finding, searching, seeking, Mm-hmm, what's mm-hmm. worked best for this particular genre of of people people yeah well i'll tell you uh, it all starts with your relationship with yourself um which is important for all people but for sensitive people it's absolutely key absolutely key uh because and i count myself as a sensitive person you know when i was young i was raised in a very chaotic alcoholic family yeah and um And uh, I used to have nightmares and the nightmares were that I was in a house where someone was breaking in the windows and I had no protection. I had no boundary around me. (laughs) And that tells you everything, right? There was, it it was, I, I just felt like there was no separation from others and a lot of anxiety. Um, you know, my father had said to me, I gave you life and I have the right to take it from you. He said that to you? Yes. Or in the dream or in real life? No, in real life. Oh my God. In real life. Yeah. So it just gives you a sense of, you know, growing up that it was difficult. Yeah. So, um, you know, I had to be on high alert. It was actually quite dangerous, you know, so I had to be on high alert, um, you know, and be very sensitive to others and uh, not be concerned with myself. And I think that's what the dream represented, you know, that I, you know, they, they, they were there breaking in and there was nothing I could do. 
Um, and so I developed, uh, and, you know, and I, it was a long time of suffering, you know, but, but over time, I really went on a search, you know, and I studied everything. I studied everything about empowerment, self-love, self-confidence, boundaries, yeah. you know, I got a PhD in psychology, you know, I, <laughs> and finally I got, I got this mentor coach who really, really, really helped me. And we can get into that later, but, um, what I've discovered is, uh, a type of work is called the diamond self work, right? Okay. Which is internal work. It's you yeah. and your relationship with yourself uh, and you um, rewiring your brain in terms of your own identity, right? The thing about it is, is that there is no such thing as a fixed neural net about your identity. There's no such thing. Yeah. If you look at the section of the brain that has to do with identity it would be like a light show like changing all the time yeah. yeah right now you can take charge of that right and you can create what you prefer as your identity <laughs> i now, love that... how you, you just said prefer that i mean that's so important that is mm -hmm. so important in this conversation mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. You can create, I'm going to say it again, you yeah. can create what you prefer as your identity. And you can base that on who you really are and your unique gifts, your unique quirks, and who you want to be, right? Yep. Yes, yes. Um, and this is very powerful for us sensitive, empathic people. It's very, yep. very, very, uh, you know, important. So, um one of the first ways, you know, we help people do this in coaching is they get to give themselves an empowering nickname. I love that. I love mm -hmm. that. You know why? Mm -hmm. Because I have this, I call it like an alt, uh, what, uh, like a alter ego or like mm -hmm. it's an identity that allows me to manage and regulate my anxiety when it flips exactly. up. Yes. So I go to, which is a mad scientist. So it's, he, he kind of looks like Doc Brown from, from um, Back to the Future. So like, I will sort of tap into that to manage and balance and regulate the anxiety. And that's one of the things that I do teach my clients. So I love that you're saying that, that that's one of the techniques that you use. It's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, we're on the same wavelength for sure. So yeah. yeah, and you get to give yourself a nickname like uh, courageous, resilient, strong, empowered goddess, uh, mm -hmm. whose boundaries are impeccable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I you love might want to be the totally discerning one who keeps pe only the best people around her. Right. Yeah. So I am the totally discerning one who keep only I keep only the best loving people around me yeah. or um, I am the, you know, uh, foxy vixen. Right. Who um, clearly knows how to uh, bring uh, what is needed to any situation. Right. So there's calm. Yeah. You can also put the word calm, peaceful courageous, strong. These words are wonderful in your, what we call the diamond self name. I call this your diamond self name, you know, bringing in resilient, courageous, strong, powerful, um, you know, a, a discerning, discerning, right? Yeah. Discerning yeah. Uh, boundaries with healthy boundaries. Um, you can also use the phrase who uses her anger as a force for good. <laughs> That's like divine feminine energy, you know, because there's yes. strength behind it while still being feminine. Exactly. 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 That is divine feminine energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And divine feminine energy is irresistible. A, it's irresistible. And B, it protects you. Yeah. And C, it gives you peace and happiness. You know, yeah. it really, really does. Um, so you're reprogramming your mind. You know, I grew up, I was told that I was a, a piece of crap, literally by my parents. And um, as I told you, no, I, they really, it, I was an accident, really. And um, so uh, I grew up feeling like crap. It really, the, the self-talk was more about how I was uh, not worthy, not smart, uh, couldn't do anything. I used to walk outside my parents' 
house on the front sidewalk and cry because they had me. It's like, oh God, they had me. I'm so sorry for them. They had me, a horrible, wretched person who's useless. And um, what happened was my 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 coach, you know, he said, no, you're extraordinary. You're incredible. You know, you could see um, the potential and the real me underneath this fear and, um, you know, guardedness and that I grew up with. You know, I mean, growing up, I was so socially phobic uh, that I uh, could not speak. Wow. So, yes, that isn't that weird. And this That's... is what I do now. And this is what uh, I do now. <laughs> talk, talk about transformation. Yeah, I couldn't speak. No, growing up, because it was pretty dangerous to speak in my family, because if I said anything that was wrong, yeah, I would get smacked, really smacked. Wow. And um, so, you know, uh, my mother would introduce me and she would say, oh, she's extremely shy because I would not relate at all to anybody. Wow. Uh, if I was away from the house, I could talk to people a little bit, you know, but that that just gives you a notion of how severe it was. And yeah. um, a coach. You know, he was like, okay, you're going to give yourself a diamond self nickname. And I want, and my coach said, you're going to be the most brilliant, incredible woman psychologist in America. I'm like, he's insane. <laughs> this guy is insane. <laughs> so he's giving me a diamond self name, you know what I'm right. saying? And um, I, you know, and at first it was like, whoa, this is weird. And, um, uh, cause I didn't have any way to relate to anything like that. It was sure. like, I mean, I could relate to being denigrated, uh, you know, being treated, yeah. mistreated, but not that. And, um, and then slowly I took it in and I took it in and I took it in. <laughs> so it took I took it in, you know, and yeah. And he was like the great fairy godmother to me, you know, it was like, yeah. he met Cinderella covered with ashes, yeah. shy, yeah. pretty mute. I could barely speak to him very much anyway. Um, pretty mute and shy. And he, you know, he could see the girl who could go to the ball. Yeah. He could see that I could go to the ball. Yeah. And, and I couldn't see it, you know, and, um, and, or hear it or feel it. And then, um, you know, it started seeping in, it started seeping in, it started seeping in, you know, and I got more and more safer and safer. And those, those nightmares went away. I stopped having nightmares of people breaking in, you know, to, to the house that represented myself, yeah. you know, um, and um, I began, you know, really wanting to pay it forward. And, um, you know, uh, so my diamond self name evolved over time. Right now, it's the uh, radiant beacon of loving guidance. <laughs> That's so beautiful. I, you know, you're touching on something really, really, really important that I, I feel like most people don't either understand or they just don't get. And that is the, you know, the, the coaching aspect. Sometimes there's like a negative connotation to that, but a lot of people feel like they can be a lone wolf and just make it out there on their own. And they try and do their own work and, and they can only get kind of, but they're interested in doing work or self-improvement, personal development, but then they kind of get stuck. And so, I mean, I'm hearing you say that somebody was there to, to sort of, in a way, hold space for you to see in you what you couldn't see in yourself. And I think a lot of people don't understand how valuable that is in terms of your evolution and transformation and healing and growth, because even the best coaches, they have coaches, they have mentors, they have, exactly. and the thing about humanity is we are wired for connection. So to be that lone wolf, you're going to stay at a certain place in a certain mindset and a certain frame, because would you ever have come up with your diamond nickname alone or even knew that that was like an avenue you can go to? So that was a paradigm shift for you. It literally opened you up to a new world and you jumped timelines, right? So you were now able to make choices and decisions because you had that support. And I feel like a lot of people just don't get that. 
Mm-hmm. They don't understand. Mm-hmm. Well, they they don't get the support, but they also don't under, don't understand the value of support. It's so true. It's so 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 true. I mean, having the correct support, especially when you're sensitive and empathic. Yeah. It turns your life 180 degrees. It turns your life from fear and darkness and always being stressed and waking up like, Ugh, with, yeah. you know, today is, oh my God, you know, it's scary um, to joy to actually, you know, what's funny is that I feel like, oh, I used to think of this as like normal people, normal people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they can just wow. wake up happy. Normal people. Just wake up happy. Think normal people are not having any anxiety attacks. Normal people oh, are wow. able to talk. They're able to talk to others. Yeah, and I wasn't. And um, and I became normal in a way. Actually, really, as a result of this kind of loving up, you know, this kind of coaching, which is really beyond coaching. It's yeah. it's pretty deep, you know. Um, uh, it's you. You might call it needs based mentoring. It's it's based on the sure. deeper needs, you know. Sure. And um, out of that experience, you know, I've been able to meet and marry my incredible soulmate. There's no way, Terry, in a million years I could ever have this relationship without having had that coach, that fairy godmother coach. No way. No way. In fact, when I first met my husband, I immediately started running away from him because he was (laughs) way too good, you know, and too nice. So I'm like, oh, God. Oh, this is terrible. (laughs) He's so nice. It's awful. But my coach said, stay with him. Yeah. Go ahead. Stay with him. I suggest he's good to you. Learn how, yeah. learn what that is. <laughs> yeah. But that that's the perfect example of connection and being able to, because the whole idea of being human is relationship. Humans relate to people, places, things, and circumstances. There's always an exchange of something somehow. So relationship is is the is kind of like, if you think about it, the key to any type of human experience. You exactly. know, so you first, it sounded like you were inspired to look into yourself so that you built the relationship with yourself first Mm -hmm. in that process, you're building a relationship and a connection with your mentor, your coach, Mm -hmm. then you were prepared, or at least it sounds like you were ready, whether you would admit it or not, that's a whole other story, then to Mm -hmm. take it to another level and invite someone else in a more romantic capacity so again Mm -hmm. all of that Mm -hmm. is relationship absolutely correct yeah and and he gave me the template for what it was like to relate to someone who is validating who is appreciative who's loving you know who's generous of spirit and um so you know with my husband I stayed with my husband initially because my coach said to And I knew (laughs) in the past, I had been suffering with guys who deserted me, guys who gave me crumbs, uh, narcissistic idiots who are abuse, you know, I mean, you name it, I would take anything in the past because that's what I was used to, you know. And um, so I gave him a chance and lo and behold, I mean, it's been unbelievable. And and I've been with him for decades. And, And honestly, it just gets better and better. I mean, Better and better. I mean, he's so incredible. He's a top tier guy. You know, he has a PhD. He he ran a hedge fund. He teaches a meditation group. He's highly wow. spiritual. That's a, that's <laughs> a, I mean, this guy. I mean, we were out to breakfast. He says, "Didn't you have an interview with Terry?" <laughs> oh, we have to rush. <laughs> <laughs> How cute is he? How cute is that? The cutest thing. Yeah. Gosh, you have the interview with Terry. Uh, it's so Aww. cute. I mean, is that so touching? Cute. That is. It's that so is. Touching. I love it. Yeah. So that's why I do all this, Terry. I yeah. do everything I do to pay it forward. Everything, everything. Because, I mean, how could I go from being a mute, like undeveloped, frightened yeah. person, like an egg, you know, like an undeveloped, frightened person, I, I, to, to what I'm doing now, where I talk yeah. to everybody in the world. I did my own, I did my own PBS special on finding love. I, yeah. 
you know, I have been on Oprah. I've yeah. been around the block and um, on the Today Show many times. Um, as yeah. a matter of fact, Photocopy used our work to um, help her find a guy. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, but isn't it interesting? I mean, it's very yeah. strange. And if you had said to me when I was a child that this would be happening, I would have thought you are completely insane. Yeah. You're completely, totally insane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's no way it would be in a happy, loving relationship with a top tier guy. Right. Yeah. There's no way it would be like happy and in a mission talking to people all over the world. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> so you keep you. I, I've heard you mention top tier guy. Can you explain what, yes. What that yes. is. Yes. If you're single and you're dating, it doesn't hurt to aim for the top because generally you're going to get what you aim for. So aim for everything. Aim for the top. OK, now, whatever that means to you, what is a top tier guy to you now? You know, we've had people in our coaching program where, you know, they wanted a mover and a shaker like the last yeah. one. Uh, if you wanted a mover and shaker, top tier men, mover and shaker but who's kind, generous, loving, and wants a family. Mm. She met him. We helped her meet him. You know, he's oh. worth $250 million. He gave her a hundred thousand dollar engagement ring and he's taking oh. her on her dream trips, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Then, um, you know, we've had other people where their top tier person is someone who's close to nature, you know, um, lives on the farm kind of thing, you know, that kind of thing. We got her, her dream guy, uh he shows up with a bunch of organic vegetables <laughs> my god that's awesome and that was the end man <laughs> that was it <laughs> is that hysterical oh anyway. that's <laughs> so a top tier think of if you could have anything and everything yes with no limits create a top tier love intention with no limits for example I have an extraordinary partner who is creative, philanthropic, kind, and highly successful, who is crazy about me and helps me grow as I help him grow. Yeah. Right? Ask for it all in, in an affirmation, which is your top tier love intention, your top tier. And don't think to yourself, I can't do this. And don't think to yourself the usual BS, which is there are no good men. I can't even find one decent man. They're all does. Blah, blah, blah. You know, this is the negative self-talk that goes on. Sure. You're dating. No, yeah. no, no, no. I just want you to forget all that, you guys, and just make it up. Make up what might be possible coming from pure possibility with your love relationship. So it could be, um, I meet and marry an extraordinary man who is developed in every way. And we have a life that's filled with joy and service and raising children together. You know, whatever it is, What what is your dream? What is your dream? Or he helps me with my work. Now, part of my dream was he helps me with my work. Oh, and wow. He helps okay. me with my work. Like, so Sam, that's why Sam was like a knew what was supposed to be happening today in my schedule. He 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 helped bring five million people to my website. I mean, you know, when you when you look at uh, love in action, what is love in action? A love in action has to do with um, helping each other live their dreams. You know, yeah. really helping uh, become who they really want to be. And also, love in action has to do with healing the wounds, helping each other heal the wounds from the past right yeah uh so it's it's by phasic real love is what i call progressive where you help the person be who they want to be okay yeah right i want to be a love expert i want to be a world you know reach a worldwide audience he's working on that then the other thing is helping me get over my childhood wounds sure. right sure yeah. um, now this man really has done that for me my husband my yeah. husband uh, where, you know, my family would do something that would make me cry and I'd be sitting in the bathtub crying and he would sit there and just be with me. That's that protective masculine yeah. energy that you needed yeah. that you didn't get, which was the. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's the yeah. reparenting. You might call it reparenting or right. needs based fulfillment, needs fulfillment. 
You know, I need it. I didn't have anybody sit by me when I was crying. I used to go cry by myself in the yeah. corner and, you know, uh, I always used hit was hiding. I mean, I was pretty yeah. much always hiding. Sure. Uh, but, um, and I didn't cry to anybody. Yeah. I didn't. So here's the repeat of that traumatic thing. Yeah. Experience, but there's the healing that he's sitting there. He's sitting yeah. there. Yeah. Right. So yeah. this is what I've been studying all my life, how to create that, how to create self-love how to create passionate soulmate love right this is what i've been studying for decades so what it like how do you define soulmate because there are some i, I feel like there's some distorted spiritual definitions out there mm -hmm, of soulmate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and you hear about these twin flames and you know all of these things and i feel yeah. like a lot of distortion because people want to spiritually bypass. <laughs> that's, yes, my, exactly. you know, that's, yes. that's my personal and professional opinion on I, that. I've seen it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, uh, they'll overlook a lot of abuse. Yes. Because after all, it's my twin's flame. And then, then they finally break up. They go back together again because it's my twin flame. It's my, yes. So there's right? a difference. And they suffer a lot. Yeah. No, yeah. a true soulmate is uplifting in your life. You feel good. You feel better as a person when you're around them. They help you be your best self and you bring out the best in them. Okay, let's start with that. So it's, it's uplifting, transactionally uplifting, exactly. transactionally uplifting. Okay. Um, now, it does feel like home, you know, of course. Yeah. You, you need to be on the same wavelength, which means that you're, you're, you have the same way of talking and understanding sure. of the world. You have similar values and goals, right? Yeah. Uh, but a true soulmate is someone who, in addition to meeting what these, what I would call top tier soul basics, which are, you know, being on your same wavelength, wanting what you want, speaking your language, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, in addition, you want to see two other criteria. Okay. One, one, the person needs to be crazy about you. Then that is, they know you're very special. Okay. They're eager to, eager to see you, reluctant to leave you. They know you're very special. Number two, they're willing to grow. Those are okay. so like, you know, everything that you're saying on a personal level, I feel like that it, I, there's something going on in my heart when you say that. So I know that energetically you are correct. Like that that's the resonance that, mm -hmm. that I'm getting. And so I think, I feel like people miss that. I really yes, feel like it's really true. So you can have a bunch of these soulmate basic qualities going on. Okay. So you're talking, we talked uh -huh. for eight hours and then we had sex and it was for eight hours. And then it was yeah. amazing. And it felt like being at home and we were on the same wavelength and we have the same values and goals. But if they're not in sincerely, consistently crazy about you, that means that they're going to be with you and work through any problems and willing to grow, which means they're going to be self-reflective. Yeah. Right. To work through those problems. So they're going to stay with you and they're going to work through problems because they're willing to grow. That's the difference between having a twin flame. Yum, 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 yum. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, it, you're saying something super, super imp important that I think and that, and I know, I don't even think, I know that this audience needs to hear because what you're describing, that process, the variable that needs to happen for that to come into place and for you to really see this is time. And yes. when you're an anxious person, you're like, I need to know right now, right here in eight hours, is this my person or not? Yeah. Yeah. And, and what you're asking is for someone who has anxiety is a big ask, however, that's where the growth and the transformation and the healing can, or at least one aspect can mm -hmm. happen. And that can be transactional, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like what you're, what you're saying is really, really important. And I hope people, when they're looking for a relationship and they're sensitive and they're anxious and, and ambitious, and the reason they're so ambitious is because of the anxiety. Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. I really hope people are listening to this because what you're saying is you're, you're, you have 
you have this relationship of two people who are writing a, a book and every chapter has to unfold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't just go, you can't just start at, you know, in, in a galaxy far, far away and then go <laughs> to the end in 10 minutes, you know, there's, there's chapters, there's an arc, there's a beginning, middle and end, you know, <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> so I, I love, love that. I, it's navigating that gray zone in dating. That yeah. gray zone is horrendous. It's like you so start, everything's great. And then you're going along and you just say, is this really a relationship? Or not? Yeah. Is he really into me or not into me? Yeah. And that gray zone where you do not know. And yeah. the reason you don't know is because it's not set. It's not settled. It's not there. Um, now, part of the way we handle that is we suggest that women date three guys at the same time. Oh, okay. So, so that's important. All of a sudden, I felt like I had this pit in my stomach. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do you get three guys at the same time? Well, well, I mean, there, there's a number of ways to do this and it can be done. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter your age. I mean, I have somebody right now in our program who's I think she's 71 and she's got it raining, man. She oh. uh, she went through a complete drought. No man at all, 71, you know, raining man. Uh, uh, you know, you got to know how to do it. I mean, I'd have to do other podcasts. With oh, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> I mean, I, it's yeah. like actually too much information to give you, but <laughs> there, are ways to, there are ways to find these guys. That's but amazing. Before, you know, before we get into any of, I don't even know if we have time today, but anyway, but before yeah. we do that, I, I really want to say um, the program of three, the dating program of three is phenomenal because wow. once you empower yourself as the chosen irresistible goddess, right? Yeah. Who is, you know, who has great boundaries, who's magnetic to top tier men. Okay. So that's your name. Yeah. And you, and by the way, you guys, you go out and you dress the part. You dress yeah. yes. the chosen irresistible goddess. This is a really fun when you shop. You don't have to put buy expensive things, but yeah. things that speak to you, you know, like yeah. this, this, this is my, you know, part of my diamond self name is uh, yeah. the radiant beacon of loving guidance, right? Yeah. And um, so you have fun shopping, right? And you, um, uh, you know, you have this, this, this work, and then you're in a mindset to feel deserving of more than one guy. Yes. Because you are the chosen, irresistible, vivacious vixen of the of everything great. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that one of everything yeah. great. Anyway, <laughs> yes, of everything great. <laughs> so you then will give yourself three guys to date. You will. Yeah. You will. Yeah. Um, you know, and the beauty of this is that you have to stay in integrity. So on yeah. the second date, you tell them, you know, I, uh, I have you give a sincere compliment. It's a triple decker sandwich on the second date. Sincere compliment. Ralph, I haven't laughed this much with anybody. I can't imagine liking anybody more than you. You're incredible. Then you tell them the bad news. But I've decided that this time around in dating, I'm taking things slow. So I'll be seeing, seeing people casually for a while. But I, then you repeat the compliment. But Ralph, I can't imagine liking anybody as much as you. You're incredible. Wow. That's I just laughed so much with you. Now, what can yeah, you see how that sets somebody up? If it's a winner, oh, yeah. man. It's a winner. He'll, he'll stay right there. Right. Right. Because that masculine energy is this what I I'm very energetic based when I work with my clients, masculine energy needs the polarity of the feminine energy. So if at any time that masculine energy is feeling threatened by the fact that that feminine energy may not be there and it wants it, it's going to go after it, keep it, continue it, maintain it. Exactly. exactly. That's kind of <laughs> like what's happening is that, you know, and it's not, and, and and when you, and I love how you use the word integrity, because when you're in integrity, you're not using it to manipulate. You're, you're being very honest. Listen, I'm, I'm seeing three other guys right now, but you are funny. That's what you're saying. And I can't imagine laughing with anybody else. Mm -hmm. so casually, I'm seeing them casually. So it's casually, good yes. Yeah. You're not having sex, by the way, this right. is an important point. You do not have sex with any of them. No, 
No, you no. You can have a little kissing, a little colloodling, but no yeah. sex. Just once you start the sex, you get the oxytocin yes. hormone coming out. You're bonding. Then you're bonded to them. And, yeah. oh, is he going to text me? Is he not going to text me? You know. Yeah. No, we want to avoid that. So yeah. you wait to have sex until there some guy becomes the front runner in the program of three right he's the front runner and then you uh have you know you see that you've had cons uh, two months of consistently improving contact i want to see two months at yeah. least of consistently improving contact and what do i mean by improving contact you're getting closer you feel better together sure. you've met some of his friends you've spent more time together uh, he's uh, he's acting more and more loving towards you, not less. Yeah. He's starting to talk about future, future together, right? Um, at that point, you can actually uh, then stop the dating program at three and nicely say goodbye to the other two. And at that point, you start having sex, uh, safe sex. Right. Um, um, with the one who's one, who's one, who yeah. won the whole one you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it's, it's, it, you want to, on a different level, you want to keep yourself energetically clean too, because if you know this front runner is more resonant with you and more compatible with you, why do you want to bring that other energy into you? <laughs> right, Literally right. into you. Literally. Safe sex is safe sex, but it's still an energetic exchange. Yes. Influence and it, yeah. energy influences energy. So, um, yeah. So that's, that's super, super important. That's something that is, I think people need to take their energetic hygiene more seriously. Um, mm -hmm. Don't, you know, so um, that's, that's fantastic. So, so I'm also, what I'm hearing you say is you have to be really clear to know what you want and know what you need to, in order to say yes. my top tier guy. Exactly. 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 Yes. You need to know what you want and what you need. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Very, very, very important. You know, very yeah. important. Uh, we have our uh, people who are in coaching, we have them go over a list of needs. There's a, yes. a long list of needs like, oh, you know, I need appreciation. I need to be respected. I need for my work to be valued. I need for to be told that I'm beautiful, that I'm sensual, that I'm sexual you know, to really understand what it is, because then when somebody starts giving it to you, you notice it. And you also notice it when they're not giving it to you. That's also the beauty of the power of, uh, you know, three guys, because Joe is really fantastic. Larry is cheap. And, uh, you know, and Ken is, you know, cute and everything. But, you know, he's, he's, he's not present. You know, you, you can yeah. compare and contrast them. Yeah. For it's sure. Really nice, you know, and then you can look at which one is really fulfilling your needs. Yeah, because even when you know what you don't like or you don't want, that's information and data. And I think what a lot of people um also, there's a whole list of how <laughs> what do people need to do? But they but this process is um a, 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 it's a system of collecting and gathering data and information for compatibility mm -hmm. so a lot of time especially when you're an empath if you're only going to be leading with emotion you it, it's going to be hard to differentiate and discern so you you bring your heart but you bring your brain too and i think a lot of people at least, you know, in, in my world and in the in the world that I work with people, it, it cannot just be emotion. There has to be discernment and differentiation. And that comes from some sort of analysis, but there has to be a balance of it which is why when you understand how energy works and how to navigate through this whole process, it's going to be in a way easier for you to curate with your preferences for this top tier guy. Exactly. 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 So, so okay. So, so Diana, so, we're close to, by the time this comes out, it's going to be close to Valentine's day, mm -hmm. right? Of course, everybody, if you don't have a Valentine, everybody's going to be searching and seeking for a Valentine. Mm -hmm. 
it can put a lot of press, this like stress and 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 um, anxiety on to people who have this desire and has it hasn't been met yet. Mm-hmm. Are there any suggestions that you can give? Um, that might work in a shorter, I I know time is always a factor, but Mm -hmm. even if it's just the attraction phase, obviously not the, the relationship phase, but Mm -hmm. there are any, are there any tips or suggestions? Yes. Yes. Uh, go to uh, a few fantastic activities during this Valentine's season. And even if it's not this Valentine's season, because you may be seeing this afterwards, Right. Go to what I call mentastic activities, you know, to cheer yourself up. Now, what are mentastic activities? Yeah. These are activities that you love that happen to have lots of men in them. <laughs> so <laughs> it, could be, it could be wine tasting, right? It could be AI, a robotics conference, investments, uh, high-end triathlon training, um, uh, charity events, um, think, you know, what would I enjoy doing that would have lots of guys in them? You know, I used to go to the singularity conference. I, I mean, I wasn't looking for men. I just enjoyed right. it because that was my interest. And right. There was 98% men there at the singularity conference. And some of them were, they were either tech geniuses showing their latest breakthrough, right? AI type breakthrough, or they were super powerful investment uh, guys. You know, they were all very successful and accomplished. They were either really nerdy and brilliant geniuses, you know, which are really interesting to talk to, or these investment guys, you know, but all men. I mean, it was all men. And if you go to a fantastic activity, just be your diamond self, bring it, baby, and just smile and say hello to everybody you meet. Bring your loving nature. You know, even if you feel shy, dress the part, dress in things that make you feel courageous. The reason I bought this is it makes me feel courageous. So I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, I'm not the old useless pile of shit. I am the radiant beacon. <laughs> I am the radiant beacon of loving guidance. Okay. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be that. Sure. I'm gonna be that. And you go to your events and you be who you really are. You be who you really are right? When you are who you really are, you are irresistible. I promise you, I promise you, your real essence, your real quirkiness, your real funniness, your real awkwardness, your real shyness is the ultimate aphrodisiac. I'm not kidding. I I talk from experience. Yeah. That is the ultimate aphrodisiac. Just get yourself out there to those fantastic activities and be yourself. Be your diamond self. Okay, great. That's I, I like that. It don't just stay at home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to get out. <laughs> yeah. yeah you now have- if you want to just go with some girlfriends to a high end lounge or bar area and hang out and talk to everybody there and you'll meet some very successful men, chances yeah. are. You know. Yeah. Uh you gotta be careful of the alcoholics. Yes. But, for sure. But still get out. Get out. You know, we all hide. We hide. Us sensitive, empathic people will tend to hide. Sure. We just do. Yeah. So are there any um, last parting words that you'd like to share about relationships and, you know, when you're extremely sensitive? um, Well, you know, it's very important to get the kind of help that we're talking about. It will change your life and rapidly. So I want you to give that to yourself. Really decide to give yourself something that's really going to bring you out of the closet, really going to bring you into life more, really going to bring you into your joy, into your full happiness, into your full empowerment. Yeah. So that you are in, you know, at age and you're, you're, the, you have agency in your life, full agency. You can create whatever you want. You can make anything happen. Really, you can including yeah. love, including success, whatever it is, you can sure. definitely do it. Uh, sure. Listen, if I could do it, anybody could do it. That's it. Yeah. And it brings, it kind of like brings us full circle to uh, the part of the conversation where we were talking about how important support is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and how yeah. we can't be a lone wolf because someone else can see something in us and then bring that out and, yes. and support us through it. So, 
if yeah. somebody wanted to work with you or if they want yes. how can people get a hold of you, Dr. Diana? What if, <laughs> well, what it's very extraordinary. Create? Yeah, what you know, I tried to think <laughs> I try to think of what would be the best gifts I could give. And the yeah. best gift I can give, you know, is I have this team of fairy godmother coaches who are unbelievable. I mean, they're they're just sorry, my little puppy's on my lap. Oh, can we yeah. see the puppy? Can you bring the puppy yeah. up? Uh, this I'm just so oh hi baby. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh my goodness. I I wouldn't when people say puppies or dogs, and like I have to see. I cannot <laughs> She sleeps on me while uh, while I do this. Anyway, which is also also part of my dream, also part of my vision. Oh yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, yes. so um, yeah. So you guys, you guys, you guys, you can actually have what I got. You can have a a fairy godmother coach. I'm giving away okay. a, a gift session to each and every one of you guys with one of my fairy godmother coaches. They're extraordinary. One of them coached me when I did my PBS special. I role reversed with her. Oh, wow. It was so thing to do my PBS special on love. And she was a incredible, you know, it oh, was, wow. she was really, and that, that special was amazing. I mean, three people in the, just in the studio audience alone got married. But anyway, <laughs> the, um, uh, you guys can have one. You can, uh, and I guarantee you'll get one if you do one thing, which is you have to say, Terry sent me. You just got to go to lovein90days.com that's lovein90days.com click on where it says at the top masterclass and coaching masterclass and coaching click up there and um sign up you'll see a form on that uh page you, you can can watch there's a little 20 minute video on there which is a masterclass i think you might find it to be fun um but fill out that form when you fill out the form you get your free session and yeah. you have to say terry sent me and the reason is you'll get the VIP treatment because sometimes we have too many people asking for sessions and we turn them mm -hmm. away. But if you put Terry sent me, then you will get your session and it's guaranteed. That's nice. And I'll make sure everybody who's either watching this or listening, I'm going to have in the show notes, I'll have the link. I'll have a little description for you of the work Dr. Diana does and how she can help you and all the things. So um, in case you didn't catch that right now, it will be written down so you can go back and review it and watch it. And I really want to thank you so much for coming here onto the portal and sharing all of the amazing information because you're so in alignment with my audience and, and the spiritual empaths. And, you know, a lot of the tips that you gave are just really, I feel like they're expansive in consciousness to people because now they might be able to change their per perception or perspective on things, which is a whole new world. You know, it's a whole new timeline that people can jump into. So thank you so, so much. And, um, Hey, you guys, if you liked this, this episode or even the portal, just in general, please let me know if you're on YouTube, click like, if you're listening to this on, uh, you know, Apple iTunes or Spotify rate the show, give us five stars if you liked it. And it's going to help other people be able to get this information as well. Because Dr. Diana gave us such great information. We want to spread the love. Literally, she's a beacon of love and light. Let's help her fulfill her spiritual purpose as well. All right, everybody. So thank you so much for joining us on the portal. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And happy Valentine's Day because it's going to be yes. around Valentine's <laughs> Day and uh lots of, of love, love everyone yes <laughs> stay connected and we'll see you on the flip side bye bye, bye. Well, our time in this now moment together has ended, but another now moment is on its way. Thank you so much for joining me in this human journey and listening to this podcast, The Portal with Terry Huberman. I sure hope you're getting something out of it. I'm here to help you clear anxiety from the past, align your energy into the present, and help you create your future. My prayer for you is to find the peace and calmness in any given now moment so you can recognize when blessings are afoot and you get to choose your next adventure. Be curious and stay connected. You can always find me at terryhuberman.com. Bye now.